Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video we are doing the very last first styling of a bonsai from nursery stock. Let's get started. Very last sounds a bit dramatic, doesn't it? But it is for this year at least. I just mustn't buy any more trees. This is Ilex crenata, mysteriously named Deep Green. We're going to get no more specific than that. Ilex crenata is the Japanese holly. It has a fantastic little tiny leaf which makes it great for bonsai. I bought this back in September last year and it's been just kind of hanging out. It was much bigger than this, probably, probably twice the size on some of these shoots. But what I did was just take them back earlier in the summer to help promote some back budding and also make it a bit more compact in the garden because it, uh, it was a bit big. <laughs> It's definitely pushed out lots of new growth. And now's the time to give it that first styling to get it on its way to being a bonsai. Like we have done so far with this little series, we're going to look at the root base first and see what we've got going on there. I've got a feeling I've got some fused roots and it doesn't look particularly balanced or nicely flared. But we're going to see what we've got, we're going to take it out of the pot and start to clean down this top surface. As with all the bonsais I've done from nursery stock this year, I am not going to be doing any root work. I'm just going to be taking the top soil surface down so I can have a look at what we've got, maybe start to look at where a possible front might be for this tree. But it is the wrong time of year to be trying to do any actual root pruning. I can do top growth, it's actually a very good time of year to do top growth pruning and I can be quite harsh with it, but I mustn't do anything to those roots. I've got my little pointy bamboo stick and I'm just going to, as with all the other trees, just come along and start to peel back the compost that this tree is in. And being a garden centre tree, it is just in a normal compost. So I'm just going to take my time teasing these roots out. I'm just investigating what I've got. I'm looking at the shape of the roots as we come down. trying to understand how the tree works under the soil surface. You can't skip this step or fast track it or anything. If you do, you could make a serious miscalculation. I'm noticing lots of really thick roots and then they quickly go into these really fibrous roots. They don't at the moment appear to sort of taper down at all. They just go bang, bang. This is also a really good time to be checking for soil borne pests like vine weevil, which particularly enjoy the containerized environment. I wonder why that is. I wonder what they did before there was pot plants. definitely a very interesting root system and I have barely scratched the surface. So I've done as much as I can to this root system. It looks to me like I've got these really nice gnarly outer roots and then underneath that I've got some sort of quite thick fleshy roots 
it would be really nice if in the spring I can come in and actually cut those underneath roots out because actually I can see this being quite a nice root over rock tree. It's got some really lovely character. I just need to sort of see, <laughs> literally see the wood for the trees. And I think my best bet for the front is, is in here somewhere. I'm getting some movement in the trunk, plus I've got these really nice crazy roots to take advantage of. But they're not so crazy that they're knotted up like these ones are just a big, <laughs> big old mess. I had to take a short break there. It got very hot and very sunny. It was meant to be sort of overcast with the odd sunny spell, but it just suddenly went blue skies, full August sunshine. So I had to cover up the root ball quickly with a plastic bag. Uh, I've given it a damp down. And now it's cooled down and the sun has gone off this little corner of the garden. So I'd got as far as choosing the front, what I think will be the front eventually. And as I was looking at it, I was thinking it would look really nice as a root over rock. It's so interesting. So I've pulled out a rock that I bought last weekend. It probably isn't the rock for this tree, but it gives you maybe an idea that we would be looking to get this boy growing over, extending its roots over in some way. That was a really nice chunk of granite which I bought at the garden centre. They have these sort of big gabions full of different types of rock for um, adding into rockeries and um, pond landscaping, that sort of thing. And to be honest, I just wanted them to start helping me visualise some different ideas for some of my trees. I don't want them all looking the same. I want to start thinking uh, sort of upper level a little bit. <laughs> but the next thing to do here is maybe to have a look at the angle of the trunk and I'm thinking that it would be nice to try and push it off absolute vertical so that the movement is moving through the vertical line. Something like that could work. It's pushing a dynamic in that direction. We've got the roots coming here. Maybe. Now, what if we go this way? The growth I've got so far, obviously because this has been grown as a shrub for um, the garden, so it's got lots of very long straight pieces of growth which don't give me very much interest. So I'm in quite a similar position to the one I was in with the crab apple. I rather like that. It's got, it's got quite a lot of movement coming up through this main trunk bear in mind that most of the rest of the growth will come off and we will just be focusing on what we've got left of the trunk. So I'm thinking that this will be the front. I want this one to be slightly off the centre. I don't want it to be an eye poker coming straight forward. So I rather like that angle we've got going on there. I think I'm going to pot this as it is here and I'm going to now just fill in what I've got with Akadama, Lava and Pumice.
just like we did with the trees earlier in the summer, we're going to get this one used to the idea that it's going to be living in this sort of substrate from now on. And we'll start to try and intermingle it a little bit with the root ball. Okay, so that's everything now topped back up with the Akadama lava pumice mixture. Yes, this is a very large pumice. Um, I'm just using up the last of what I had. What I do need to do, I know I said no root work, but I've got where I've changed the angle of the plant, I've got some little bits that are poking up into the air and will die anyway. So far better to remove them cleanly. The presence of the Akadama in the soil mix will give us extra branching, scaled branching of the root system. So it's great to be able to get this at the edges of the pot and get that starting to know what it's like to be in Akadama because it's such an incredible material. And when we're using the chopstick to push it down, we're not trying to break the Akadama. We just want to make sure we filled any air pockets. So now we've done that, we can start looking to take off branches. There's one I particularly want to remove, and that is this one here. It's very straight, it comes right out frontwards. Now Ilex crenata you can take cuttings from really easily. You've got some semi-ripe wood there that you could do right now. I'm not going to, I have got so many trees, uh, I will just be happy to get this one going without worrying about taking cuttings from what I'm taking off. One thing at a time. <laughs> so I know that I want this to be my main trunk coming up and then this piece and then this piece upwards here. It's got lots of lovely wiggle and I want to cut it probably about there-ish. So I'm going back in with the secateurs. It's just easier for the moment to use something like this. We can make smaller, more refined cuts with other things. when we get to that stage. That's, that's a whole nother shrub. There's so much cutting material on that. You could easily, with a little bit of um, hormone rooting compound, easily, easily take hundreds of cuttings just from that one piece. Everything else coming out is just so straight. It just, it's, it's been grown to be a big shrub. I think I might have a bud happening here. Do I go crazy and just cut everything off? I think, let's be bold. I'm gonna leave myself a little stub I can see here that there is a shoulder or a collar where the branch joined the trunk. So by leaving myself a little stub, it allows it to 
compartmentalize around this junction and I should be able to take this away once that's all healed. So that I don't forget what I had in mind, I'm just popping a little bit of my bamboo stick into the front just to mark the front position. Right, bear with me on this one. I can see justification for removing this altogether. The question is where do I want the tree to start from? Do I want this to be the, the primary branch or do I want it to start higher up? This is a very thick branch for the size trunk I have. So I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to cut it off. Yeah. In for a penny, in for a pound. Again, tons more cutting material. You could grow a whole hedge from that. You know what I'm thinking. Yeah, I am. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off as well. I don't need to have left a stump for that because I am going to be removing all of this. In fact, I'm going to take this back a bit. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, I won't need you to do any wiring, will I? <laughs> so again, the stump is purely to allow the tree to compartmentalise what's gone on here. And it will hopefully die itself back to the joint at the shoulder. And we can then start to remove this once it dies and the same here and the same here. Once I've applied the cut paste I'll be putting this tree in a nice sheltered corner so that it can have a bit of a rest from the summer heat that we're having and hopefully start to regrow some sprouts from the, uh, the trunk. I can see lots and lots of dormant buds. Because I've left the root system alone there's going to be plenty of mass there to be able to push resources up and down the tree so we should be fine we should be absolutely fine <laughs> I probably won't feed this until I start to see signs of new growth on it just again to just give it a rest it has undergone quite an operation here today Right, well that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.